Hello everyone, Venris here and today I would like to talk with you about the Thrones of Decay, the upcoming DLC for Total War Warhammer 3, the DLC that we really hope will be released in April of this year and uh, we, will be, we will be able to take a look and of course play it with the new content for Nurgle, Dwarves and the Empire. And in this video I want to talk about uh, mechanics for each of those factions that I think really needs a rework and what are my ideas for those mechanics reworks. But besides that, before that happens, we have a sponsor of this video. Hey, do you wear shirts? Because I do. I think everyone is. Yeah, I think at least. And I like the geek ones, like really stupid shirts sometimes or with cool graphics on them. And my wife always have a problem with finding new one because the graphic itself deteriorates after two free washings. But it's not the case with the Into the AM. These that I received to show you. Very light, breathing fabric, but also great design. Cosmonaut and all in this case. But that's not all that Into the AM have to offer. Team of artists and creators with a very cool vision. Clothing is a canvas to express what drives you. Many interesting designs is affordable prices since 2012. And with my affiliate link, you can get 10% off for every purchase. So yeah, just check it. It's really worth it. Okay, let's think then. Nurgle, the faction that we all need to agree that is not the best right now in the game. Maybe not the worst in terms of vanilla, but not the best. The plague system is a thing that I would not touch. I like the plague system, it may need some buffs, but overall, I think the system works, it's quite interesting. Of course, on the Festus it's better, <laughs> yeah, but on Kugath it's not bad. Yeah, it just needs some stuff. Adjustments, I would say. But the other problem, the problem that mechanically I think is the biggest right now for the Nurgle and should be in a row work of the faction are the buildings. Buildings are an aspect of the game, of Nurgle game, that are very, very bad, in my opinion. We have this, let's say, cool, we can ask, call it a cool uh, thing with a rotation. So right now when you build a building, you pay it for it once, and each several turns, depending on uh, several different effects, they start to rotate. So it means that they get higher and higher levels, get to the very strong versions of it, maybe not that strong in vanilla, and then get back to the low one. That means that also unit capacity is being increased, and so on, because uh, Nurgle recruitment is instant, instant. And this is a big problem right now in the game, because you cannot plan anything. You cannot make st strong provinces because everything base is based on the rotation. If the rotation is good or rotation is bad, uh, it's total RNG. Yeah, because enemy can attack your province, and at this moment you can have all buildings on the lowest rotation or on the highest, and and so on or mixed. This is also a problem with the income because income also changes between those. And overall, we were, we were trying to fix the problem in SFO, making that the rotation, the income is always the same, just different buildings uh, um, affect the income. So that way you always know how much your province income is doing and uh, how much it's not. Simple, yeah? But I am thinking about something quite simple here. Really, really simple yeah, with the Nurgle, because Nurgle may, may need more work, but I would leave the rotation system for the recruitment stuff. Yeah, so recruitment everything that uh, have uh, units and so on, let, let it stay. Let it stay as it is. It's fine. It should rotate. But uh, the industry building, the defense buildings, the special buildings should just grow, but never rotate. Yeah. So hear me out. You construct this building and it slowly will increase its effects to the maximum value. And when the maximum value is reached, it would be dependable if the value is still going to stay it with a corruption. So, for example, we have our growth building that, let's say, goes to 50. It starts at 10 and each <clears throat> two turns it moves by 10 
moving to like 50. Yeah, simple. But to maintain this 50 all the time, you need a high corruption. As the corruption will be going down, also the building will deteriorate and go down. That would make that <clears throat> you as a Nurgle, you want to spread the corruption in a settlement in a province region that you're going to take soon, because when you build the stuff there, they will immediately go to the high level. But it goes on the other way, in enemies that lowers corruption in your province will really hinder your buildings. So yeah, that's the simple idea. Let's have all self-growing buildings that just do not go down by themselves. It is based on corruption. Yeah, so that's the simple idea of mine for uh, the Nurgle. And that was the simplest idea. Let's go to the more complex ideas right now. And the more complex idea that I had is with the dwarves. The dwarves as a faction are quite interesting right now. They are still one of my favorite factions in the vanilla. And I don't think that they have a lot of problems. They have some. But like, for example, the forge, I really like. Big technology tree, I like. Unit roster, I like. Can be bigger, but I like it. Characters, effects, places in the world, I so I like those. The problem that most people have is the Book of Grudges. How random the system is. Because right now, Book of Grudges is working that way, that any aggression action against you is being written into the book, and that way you need to have a, you have a mission that you need to fulfill. For example, kill a specific faction, and so on, win, win the battle against, and so on. And when you do it, the Grudge is being erased, and you get a reward, and also the Grudge meter on top is not progressing, because the more it progress, the worse it is. But I think that this system is very passive right now. You don't have much incentive on what you can do with it and what you cannot do. So my idea is also quite simple, maybe not as simple as the Nurgle one, but the idea is that when someone makes something uh, aggressive against you, yes, this faction is being put into the book of Grudges, yeah? But not in terms of a mission, but this is like a faction, and each faction would have their number, and this number would uh, indicate how many Grudges, or like a Grudges points, thing that's, we can name it um, differently, would uh, this faction have. Of course, this if this faction does more against you, then it's more and more uh, aggressive against you, <laughs> not uh, uh, likable by the dwarves. And the thing here is, uh, this faction would be that way that, of course, having more Grudges for a specific, uh, overall with the factions, more Grudges points would uh, increase the bar on top. I would not change the bar. I think it is fine. But my idea is here that you, in book, you would have those factions that have number of points of Grudges with you. And to remove those points, you can embark on the missions. But the missions itself you decide when you want to activate them. So, simple idea. Let's say with uh, the green skins, you have a lot of Grudges, uh, Grudges point because they did a lot of bad things to you. You click on that and you can pick from a special dilemma what missions for what point you want to do. Some missions can be harder and they will remove more points and become uh, give better rewards. Yeah, but at this time you are quite weak. Let's make more missions, but they are smaller with smaller rewards. Yeah, for example, the, there can be like build a building, recruit a unit, <clears throat> just move to the different location, uh, the enemy location, I mean, and so on. Yeah, but the harder can be like win five battles. Yeah, or win without with ten percent casualty only, things like that. But they would give way better reward of gold and uh, remove more points from a specific faction. Yeah, so. That would be the uh, my idea for that was with uh, the book of Grudges. But what about the last faction? What about the last faction that we are going to get in Thrones of Decay? Empire. Most neglected faction, in my opinion, in Total War overall, in terms of the series. I know we had a rework with them, with Electro Code system, that I personally hate. I, would, I said it multiple times in multiple videos. I think that... I, 
Empire rework is one of the worst hero reworks that was done in this game. This is also the list of my favorite factions to play after the rework because how broken and uninteresting it is. But hear me out. First of all, uh, we need to say what is good with the faction and the mechanical stuff. So Elector Count system right now is that you can elect specific lords to a specific provinces that you own uh, and they become like the Elector Counts. They get a new weapon and faction bonus. And this is fine. This is fine system. Through this system, you can also confederate them and so on. And okay, this is fine. My problem with the system overall is the events that got them random events that you get to send the troops to defend, to uh, make uh, two Elector Counts happy with each other and so on. This is the worst system that is in the game because two things first of all it's total rng and it ceased to exist at the end of the game because when you confederate the whole empire it ceases to exist which okay that this is a good thing yeah that it, it ceases to exist <clears throat> it also uses authority points that again are just uh, uh, random game sometimes random lose you can you have really zero incentive to spend them all uh, besides uh, those events so you don't know if you should accumulate or not because again you cannot spend it besides that of course we were trying to fix it with the mods um, not only SFO but many other mods wanted to make more spendings for authority but <laughs> let's move to my idea <clears throat> this is idea that I had ages ago. I think that the whole random dilemma thing should be just removed. There, there should not be random uh, dilemma. There should be a new panel where you open and you can see each uh, empire faction in empire, of course, uh, see how many provinces they have, some, how many regions, how many armies and like a overall power, let's say. And see, of course, if they are with war uh, with each other or not. Like a, like a simple diplomacy panel. But the idea uh, is that each turn, this button that would be on the bottom right or, or somewhere would be a, like an exclamation mark. Okay, elector count, have a deal with you. They want to talk with an emperor to check what is it. Because you are an emperor. You decide who you want to talk with or who you don't want to talk with. Yeah? And you can check that... Oh, yes, those guys have problems with rebels. And you have, like, say, say, three, four, five turns. Do you want to right now deal with it? And now you click on the on this map of electoral counts, on the co specific count that have a problem or, like, a case with you. You click on it. Okay, and now dilemma pops up that was, like, random normally. And you have a decision. You help, you then, or no, I don't want to help today important thing would be that if you don't help in a specific time then the this faction can lose automatically one of the regions to the rebels for example yeah or start a war with each other with a different elector count and that way we still have more or less the same uh, uh, dilemmas and the events that we had in vanilla right now but you have incentive and you have the power to decide what you want to do first. Because in many times, right now in Vanilla, the pop, there can be a pop-up for the event. And what do you get? You don't have a, you don't have that amount of money. But you can get it because you can sell a building right now or something. Or just win a battle. You are missing like 10 gold. And you cannot do this dilemma. Yeah? Or you, you don't want to send uh, the troops right now. You want to send it next turn. But no game says you need to do it right now or they will die. No. We want to have that you decide when you want to do it. So five turns, I, f I would say cooldown five turns will be max. Yeah, and you decide it, <clears throat> about it. So that will be a simple thing. But the more complex thing that will come when you start to reunify the whole uh, empire, the system still works. It would be less random, but the citizens of a specific regions, provinces of the empire, there's still Averland, there's still Middenheim, and so on. Yeah they can uh, give you uh, dilemmas about themselves that give you bonuses. For example, you get an information that in Null they started to produce something new technologies and uh, you click on it and you have a simple dilemma. All your steam tanks will be permanently way stronger or for a very long period of time 
or you want to increase the technology research rate by a lot. Of, yeah, do you want to do it or not? You do it, yeah? So this would be, again, normally I would overall remove random dilemmas from the empire, at least for Core France, yeah, and uh, Geld. Everything would be in this new panel and you decide which dilemma you want to do, yeah? Of course, you can do all of them, but we can also make that authority will have a use right now. So dealing with dilemmas overall uh, wanted to solve them would cost authority. Not that in this option is plus 1,000 uh, authority, mi minus 1,000 authority, no. You just accumulate uh, authority and more authority you have with more uh, uh, elector counts, machinations you can deal with. And that would be the idea for the empire. Uh, I know it sounds complex, but for me, that would fix the empire because it would become less random, more controlled and more interesting. And of course, it would be working in an all, all end game and the, you won't be losing the whole thing. So yeah, those were my three ideas for Nurgle, Dwarves and the empire for the throne syndicate. I really hope that so those faction rewards are coming, maybe not in such a way, but it, they are going for those faction and yeah what do you think about that uh, my question for this video is that what do you think about those reworks ideas maybe you have better ideas so please post them in comments section and remember if you like the video you can always support us for mod team through patreon and uh, donations Thanks to you, we are making this content and free mods. We are also working on a giant SFO update right now with hundreds of new traits and skills for the characters, reworks for the corruption, stances, and edicts, and so more. Uh, remember, you can always feed the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, thank you for the supporting. And as I said, the question is, what do you think about those mechanics and if you have a better ideas? I was Venris, and I'm out. See you.